Jonas Salk and the Polio Vaccine, A Shot of Hope, created by Nicholas Ford and Nicholas Vincent. Before 1955, polio, or poliomyelitis, was a worldwide disease. It affected millions of people, paralyzing and even killing its victims. In 1955, that all changed with one man. That one man saved millions of lives. He created an innovative vaccine for polio that changed the lives of Americans in his time up to the present. That man was Jonas Salk. The night before, we had been to an amusement park and we were riding with the whip. So when I woke up uh, that next morning and had this terrible stiff neck, we felt it was from riding on these little cars that whip you around. The Jonas Salk polio vaccine was the first polio vaccine. Salk took many years of his life to create this incredible innovation. It provided prevention of polio, which affected everyone in America from all walks of life. The vaccine eradicated every native case of polio in the United States. If this innovation had never existed, millions of lives today would still be affected by polio. Originally, he took law classes and showed great promise as a future attorney. A few years later, he decided to go into the field of medicine. He then entered into the New York University School of Medicine, barely paying his tuition with small amounts of money from his parents. While at the school, he met the man who would soon become his most important colleague, Dr. Thomas Francis Jr. On June 7, 1939, he received his Ph.D. and became Dr. Jonas Salk. Salk took many positions in his area of microbiology, including working with the U.S. Army and Dr. Francis to create an influenza or flu vaccine. Salk and Francis had an innovative idea on how they would accomplish this amazing feat. They decided to use a killed virus vaccine to help prevent the flu. The poliomyelitis virus is an enterovirus. So it's one of those viruses that has a predilection for your gastrointestinal system. Polio was one of the most deadly diseases in the 20th century. Polio is a viral disease, therefore it can't be cured. The virus attacks the heart, lungs, and muscles that help us do our daily activities. The most common spots affected by this crippling disease are the lungs, leg, and arm muscles. One person has a higher risk for lung deterioration if one has a lung ailment, such as asthma. Many polio patients had to live with the assistance of the iron lung in order to be able to breathe. The first iron lung was introduced to the public in 1928. I was uh, asthmatic, and thank you God that it did not go to my lungs. The polio virus spreads to the air and by physical contact. One may receive the virus when touching a doorknob. The United States had its first major polio outbreak in 1894. There were more than 20,000 cases of polio a year from 1945 to 1949. There are many signs and symptoms that come with polio. The main symptoms are stiff or achy joints and muscles and a very high fever topping at about 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The aches and pains graduate into locking and cramping muscles and joints and eventually paralysis. When it has reached this point, there is a chance of death occurring. Nobody knows where the polio virus was first discovered, but some say that the first polio case was in ancient Egypt and then somehow spread to Europe. After a number of years, it spread onto the United States. By 1952, 58,000 people were infected, 21,000 people were paralyzed, and over 3,000 people had died from polio. During his studies at the University of Michigan, Salk discovered that there were three types of the formidable polio virus. Salk then turned his studies to creating the polio vaccine that he's so famous for. At first, he was faced with the dilemma of actually getting his hands on a live specimen of polio. However, in 1954, that problem was solved. The three-part scientific team of John F. Enders, Thomas Weller, and Frederick Robbins discovered that you could grow the polio virus on embryonic tissue. The effort to eradicate the disease started small, with Dr. Salk and his team immunizing a few thousand students. On this basis, it may be suggested the vaccination with 80 to 90 per 80 to 90 percent effective against paralytic poliomyelitis. That it was 60 to 70 percent effective against disease caused by type 1 virus, and 90 percent or more effective against that of type 2 and type 3 viruses. In 1955, the vaccine was officially deemed safe enough for the public, and Salk released the vaccine to the people of America. Nevertheless, a significant problem soon arose when 200 people were paralyzed and 11 were killed because some of Salk's vaccines still had too much living polio in them and were defective. Many people were furious at Salk until some people working for him discovered that all the bad vaccines had come from one lab and that lab was shut down. Cutter vaccine was feared faulty. Vaccinated children stricken by polio. Uncle Sam stepped in. The vaccination program was stopped. In the years following the development of the vaccine, there was a 96% reduction rate in the number of polio cases nationally. Using Salk's vaccine, Albert Sabin developed a live vaccine, which means he gave the patients a small dose of the actual virus. 
He didn't give enough of the virus for the patient to experience symptoms. When a patient received the virus, his or her immune system would react and kill the virus. Our immune system is activated to produce uh, antibodies which are there to attack the organism, as well as memory cells which are there to continue to circulate and remember that particular agent. September the 28th, 1946. Hi Dad, they have me trying to walk so that I can come home. My legs hurt, but I'm doing better. They want me to touch my toes before I leave. Please tell them I never could. In 1954, Salk took up a position as the Professor of Preventative Medicine at Pittsburgh. In 1957, he was also appointed Professor of Experimental Medicine. And in 1960, he founded the Salk Institute for Biological Studies in La Jolla, California, and became its director. Since he was conducting his work at the University of Pittsburgh, Salk chose to test his first vaccine there. In 1952, after the vaccine was developed, the first people who received the vaccine were 15,000 Pittsburgh residents. A large portion of the 15,000 recipients were children. At the same time, Salk's former teacher, Dr. Thomas Francis, wanted to make sure the vaccine was safe and effective. He developed and directed a field study that was so large that many people thought he was crazy. The trials involved around 1.8 million children from Canada, the United States, and Finland. His idea was to use a process that is now called the double-blind test, which has since become standard in testing new medicines. In this process, neither the physicians giving the shots nor the children and their parents will know whether it is Salk's vaccine or a fake. In order to make sure that the test was completely impartial and without any bias, Dr. Francis had three special requests regarding the double-blind test. First, he proposed that equal or greater numbers of children than those who were to receive the vaccine should receive an injection of an inert solution. Second, both the control group and the actual group would be monitored in the same way. Last, there is to be no interference from the NFIP, the National Foundation of Infantile Paralysis, today known as the March of Dimes. Many people know that the disease was deadly, but they do not appreciate the physical and mental effects that it had on its survivors. If these people could have been diagnosed later, Jonas Saul could have saved them from this life-changing disease. From those people who had the illness, an innovative treatment called the Sister Kenny treatment was used to stimulate muscle growth. September 10, 1946. I just talked to your nurse and she said that they will continue with the Kenny packs tomorrow as you are much better today. I'm anxious to see how you react when you start walking again. September the 12th, 1946. Hi Dad. I can sit up by myself now. I guess the Kenny packs are working, even though I hate them. I can remember hearing uh, them pushing the washing machines uh, down the hallway, and they did this three times a day. And they'd wheel them into your room. They had boiling water and rags, and they'd run it through the the ringer, and they'd put them on you. Uh, and this was part of the Sister Kenny treatment. Volunteers came to help with the polio epidemic. One of them was Mrs. Charles Fleck, who had a daughter who contracted polio. She founded the Spalding School for Crippled Children. In a radio interview, she said, even if you are not able to, do what you can. One of the most famous polio survivors was the 32nd President of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Roosevelt was diagnosed with the second type of polio in 1921. He was paralyzed from the waist down and had to be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. He decided to hide his disability during his presidency. As a result, there are only two pictures in the world that depict Roosevelt in his wheelchair. Polio affected millions of people, paralyzing and killing its victims. Many families were heartbroken and torn apart. In 1955, that all changed when Jonas Salk created his vaccine. The vaccine eradicated every native case of polio in the United States. If this innovation had never existed, millions of lives today would be affected by polio. Vaccines are one of the greatest discoveries in humankind. And the polio vaccine was one of the pioneer vaccines. It has helped us develop, develop other vaccines for other diseases. It was a powerful and innovative solution to the world's problems then, now, and possibly in the future. This vaccine provided prevention of polio, which affected everyone in the world from all walks of life. It was also the first vaccine to use the innovative double-blind test that is used today to find solutions for other viral diseases like the swine flu, dengue fever, and others. Jonas Salk's polio vaccine is truly a shot of hope.